Oh my god, guys, that was incredible. I just got done watching WrestleMania Night 2. That main event was absolutely amazing. Oh my god. That was one of the best WrestleMania main events we've seen in years. Man, that was so awesome. And we'll get into all the details here in this review of Night 2 of WrestleMania 37. This show was pretty damn good. It was better than Night 1 in my opinion, especially because of that main event. That main event really lifted this show like, man, that's going to go down as one of the best main events in history. And I know a lot of you will be upset that Edge did not win. I know a lot of you were commenting on my prediction match saying you wanted Edge to win, you thought Edge would win. Nah, the head of the table, man, I've been telling you, the head of the table is gonna do it and he is still the Universal Champion and we'll get into all the details of how that happened and just the amazing match that it was. Now getting into the details of Night 2 of WrestleMania, Things were a lot better. There were no weather issues. I don't believe it was raining during the show. I, maybe they did, but the weather looked great and the stadium as a whole looked way better. The lighting was better. The sky was definitely better. The show started out, it had pyro, it had the national anthem, and it started out with Hulk Hogan and Titus O'Neil once again, and they were in pirate costumes, going with the whole pirate gimmick. And once again, Hulk Hogan gets booed. Fans not liking Hulk Hogan in Tampa and WWE piping in the Thunderdome crowd noise to try and mask it. And they did the same with Logan Paul later. He was getting booed. They were definitely using the Thunderdome crowd noise. I don't know if that'll be a normal thing. Maybe it's just because it was like 20,000 people and not a full stadium. So they wouldn't be as loud as a normal stadium show is. So that's probably why they did it. But yeah, we started out with the hosts and yeah, nothing really special happened there. But then we started out with a big match, Randy Orton versus The Fiend. And I I was wondering going in, is The Fiend really gonna wrestle as this zombie and all the prosthetics and whatever? And no, The Fiend did not. He transformed back to his normal self with a bit of a different look. He had a new shirt and a slightly different mask. The mask looks a lot wider and a lot redder as well in certain parts. I think the shape looks better in my opinion. And he entered right out of a jack-in-the-box, a giant jack-in-the-box, and then jumped onto Randy into the ring. And let's not forget to talk about Randy Orton's awesome ring attire for Wrestlemania we certainly need that in figure form crazy wide attire from Orton it was absolutely amazing we 100% need that in figure form but Randy Orton and The Fiend went at it and they competed in red light the red light was back not the biggest fan of it but you know the match wasn't too long anyways and you know typical kind of Fiend match kind of no selling stuff, impervious to pain. Also forgot to mention that Randy Orton during his entrance, he was soaking it in. He loved having the fans back. He was soaking it all in. He was getting so hyped up on the ramp. It was really funny and The Fiend actually paid tribute to Luke Harper a bunch of times in the match, which was really nice. The match saw an end when The Fiend was about to hit Sister Abigail. The flames came up from the post and then Alexa Bliss was sitting on top of the Jack in the Box in a different outfit like a kind of Sister Abigail dark outfit and she had this like barbed wire kind of crown and like black like blood or sludge or something was like pouring down her face and it was distracting the fiend and Randy Orton hits the RKO and wins the match. And that was shocking to me. I actually don't mind that Randy Orton won it. And I'm very interested to see what happens with The Fiend and Alexa Bliss going on from here. That seems very interesting, but it was kind of weird to leave it on that note. We'll have to tune into Raw and see what happens, but... That was very interesting. Randy Orton picks up the win. Wow, I did not expect that. Next on the show, we had the Women's Tag Team Championship match between Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler versus Natalia and Tamina. The match I was least looking forward to on this show. And I don't have much to say about this match, but it was definitely better than I expected. And the fans seemed to kind of get into it a little bit too. It was kind of boring at the start, but at the end, they really picked it up and it was a lot better than I expected. And I did predict these two to retain and they did just that. Then we had a match I was looking forward to. It was Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn with special guest Logan Paul. And I'm kind of a big Logan Paul fan now. I really enjoy his podcasts and his vlogs are pretty decent too. So I like seeing him in WWE. I think it's a very smart idea to have him with his YouTube following, to have him join WWE and do some stuff. I think that's genius and I've been wanting that for a while. And Logan Paul got booed at WrestleMania 
kind of expected that. They received Bad Bunny really well, which is cool, and they boo Logan Paul, so that's pretty funny. Luckily, they didn't focus on Logan Paul too much during the match. They actually focused on the action quite a bit, and this match between Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens definitely wasn't like their 2016 matches. I didn't expect that anyways. It was a good match nonetheless. It was a little bit short. But, you know, it's alright. I don't mind if it's short. They got their stuff in. They did what they needed to do. It was an entertaining match. And then they got out of there and got to the real moment. After the match, after Kevin Owens wins, Logan Paul comes in to congratulate Kevin Owens. And Sami Zayn, he's not pleased with that. He did not like that. And he was yelling at Logan Paul, poking him and stuff. And then Logan pushed Sami Zayn. And then he tried to congratulate Kevin Owens. Raise up his hand and we all knew what was coming. Kevin Owens kicks him in the gut. Stunner. Logan Paul sells that thing, he spins around, takes a nice bump, it was a really cool WrestleMania moment. Logan Paul gets stunned by Kevin Owens. That was great. I love that. I'd like to see Logan Paul do a wrestling match later down the track. That would be good, but really depends if he wants to do it. He's got a lot of stuff going on. I don't know if he really cares about WWE, but it was nice to have this WrestleMania moment, and I'm glad that Kevin Owens got to stun him at WrestleMania. Then we had a cool backstage segment, which I totally forgot to put in the setup here. It was Great Carly, Rob Van Dam, and Riddle backstage, and I've been calling for Riddle and RVD to have a segment backstage because they're so similar. You, you know what I'm talking about. And these guys did a very entertaining backstage promo and that was all fine and good. Then we get to Riddle versus Sheamus and I knew this match was going to be a banger and it was definitely that great match. Incredible match. If it wasn't for the main event, uh, these guys would have stole the show, but the main event was top-notch. It was incredible, but this match was amazing. Should have gone longer, I reckon. I could have seen like 10 more minutes of this match. This match was awesome. This is the kind of match I like. Sheamus and Riddle, hard-hitting, fast pace, cool reversals. I love that kind of stuff. I don't like slow kind of matches. I like hard-hitting. I like reversals. I like matches that keep you on your toes, and this was exactly that, and I predicted Riddle to win. I wanted him to win. I wanted him to get his WrestleMania moment. Sheamus has had plenty, but Sheamus has been putting in the work this past year. He's been absolutely incredible. He's a great dude. I like Sheamus a lot, and you know, he deserves this reward at WrestleMania to win the United States Championship after all he has done. He's put in the work, and these guys had an incredible match. There was only one botch where they were trying to do a white noise off the top rope, but Sheamus kind of slipped, and I don't know why he even attempted to do that the way he did it anyways. Like, how is that even gonna work? He slipped, and it kind of, like, ruined the flow of the match, but... These guys had an incredible match. You definitely need to go check this one out. And the end was crazy cool. Moonsault off the ropes. Riddle hits a springboard moonsault. Gets caught with a bro kick in midair. Busts his lip up. And Sheamus is your new United States champion. And that makes me think, are they doing this because they want to make Riddle go after Bobby Lashley, put him in the main event scene? I think Riddle would be a cool winner for Money in the Bank this year. I think he's got all the tools think he's a great character, so we'll have to wait and see about that, but Sheamus definitely deserved this win at WrestleMania. We go from one hard-hitting match to another. We had the Nigerian drum fight, and I predicted Big E to win this. No, sir. Apollo won, and I'm totally fine with that. This match was very hard-hitting. They had drums, kendo sticks, tables all around the ring, and they didn't really use the drums, but they used a bunch of kendo sticks. They were just whacking the hell out of each other with kendo sticks. They used a table they use steel steps very hard hitting match but in the end very interesting finish we had double ko from nxt and raw underground he is now working with apollo cruz and he came out to help him hit a big like choke slam on big e to help apollo cruz win this match and you know why wouldn't apollo cruz win a nigerian drum fight it only makes sense i guess forgot to mention the wale big e entrance which was pretty cool i think big e is destined for big things and he could win money in the bank too there's a lot of options for money in the bank and maybe that's what they want they want him to face roman reigns now Next, so they took the title off him, or maybe it was just because Apollo was losing so much to Big E, he kind of had to win here, so I understand why Apollo won the title, and it's a nice moment for him. So Apollo now is a United States champion and an Intercontinental champion in like one year, so that's really cool. Will be interesting to see what they do with Apollo from here, but I'm kind of liking the Black Panther kind of gimmick for Apollo Crews, so that's kind of cool. Then we get to the Raw Women's Championship, Asuka versus Rhea Ripley, and Rhea Ripley kind of getting shoehorned into this. I think Charlotte was originally supposed to face Asuka, but now Rhea Ripley got this opportunity, and this match was 
not as good as I expected. It was kind of boring, to be honest. I mean, you go from two very hard-hitting, fast-paced matches, and then you get to this match, and it just felt boring. Kind of filler to the main event, and that kind of sucks that it was that way, but very kind of boring match. Rhea got a cool entrance with her brutality song being done by the person who sings it, and that was all fine and cool. And how fitting is it that, you know, that special moment that last two in the Royal Rumble, Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley, now they have their moment here at WrestleMania, both crowned champions, and it feels like WrestleMania 21. Batista and John Cena, Royal Rumble, final two, then they go to WrestleMania, both get crowned champions. It feels that way. Certainly gives me those vibes and Rhea Ripley, new champion, I'm fine with that, that's cool. Match would have been nicer if it was better, but you know, it is what it is. Definitely tough to follow these matches, but Rhea Ripley, new champion, then we get to the main event. This was awesome. But wait a second, I'm forgetting something. We had a little talking segment with the hosts, and we had Bailey come out, and she's been bugging the hosts throughout the two shows, and then I thought Becky Lynch was gonna come out, because that was rumored that she was gonna come out and do something with Bailey. No, it was the Bella Twins. That's cool, I like the Bella Twins. I'd like to see him come back and win the women's tag titles, so I think that'd make perfect sense, and they were definitely very underrated. They came out, they beat Bailey up, threw her down the stage, and yeah, that was a nice little moment. It would've been cooler if it was like, Becky Lynch though. Let's be honest, that would have been really, really cool. We'll have to wait and see if she comes back anytime soon. That'd be nice. But getting to the main event, this was so awesome, man. I was on the edge of my seat this entire match. This had such a big fight feel, man. This ain't no Roman Reigns versus Triple H WrestleMania 32 boring match that you don't really care about. This was big time. This was awesome. Man, the good thing about it was it was unpredictable. Anyone could have won that match. I was thinking, oh, maybe Edge will win it. Maybe Roman will win it. Maybe even Daniel Bryan would win it. And it was so, so awesome for that reason. And then the match was exactly like what I like. Hard hitting, fast pace. And Edge came out with an awesome white attire. We 100% need that in figure form. That was incredible. That white attire, the fans were going crazy for Edge. Everyone wanted to see Edge win, and they were kind of booing Daniel Bryan too, because they liked Edge a lot. They are kind of booing Daniel Bryan. And even more surprising, they are actually booing Roman Reigns. You'd think like he turned heel, he's like cool now, but no, they, they still boo him, and that's actually cool. That's kind of the desired response for a heel like Roman Reigns. That's really cool that they actually boo him. I'm pretty sure it wasn't piped in crowd noise of the boos. I think they actually did boo him, and they were chanting Roman sucks, Roman sucks throughout the match. It was such a hard-hitting, fast-paced match. Some of the highlights, a DDT to Jey Uso on the stairs. He was getting involved right at the start, but Edge took him out, DDT on the stairs. I was thinking of doing this spot for my match, but I thought maybe it'd be a bit cartoony. Edge and Roman Reigns, they both went for the spear at the same time and collided. That was actually pretty cool in execution. A power bomb to Daniel Bryan through the table off the stairs, and then Edge comes and spears Reigns off the stairs. Then there was a really intense moment when Edge had a cross face on Roman Reigns and then used a piece of a chair to put it in his mouth, and the visual of Roman Reigns that was awesome. He was so wide-eyed. He was struggling. That was great. And then Daniel Bryan comes in, ruins Edge's moment. He comes in and gets the yes lock on Roman Reigns as well. Double submission on Reigns. At one point, it looked like Edge was going to win, but Daniel Bryan again ruins Edge's moment. I think Edge is going to turn heel and Daniel Bryan and him are going to feud because Daniel Bryan kind of did ruin Edge's moment here. Edge went old school. He tried to get a concerto on Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. He did get a concerto on Bryan, which I was like, whoa. They actually did that, and then Jey Uso comes in, stops it from happening to Roman Reigns. Edge takes out Jey, and then Reigns hits the spear on Edge, and then he hits him with a concerto. Hits Edge with a concerto, drags Edge onto Daniel Bryan, pins them both. He pinned both of them to win. That is absolutely incredible. I thought that Daniel Bryan was in this to take the pin. He pinned them both. The head of the table, the tribal chief, he does it bigger and better than anybody. He's going to pin them both. That's the strong champion. That is what I wanted to see. That is awesome, man. And it's like, yes, it would have been nice for Edge to win here. But like, come on. Roman Reigns is the face of the company. He is the future. You need to build the Roman Reigns versus The Rock in Hollywood. You need to have him look strong here. And this is his first outing as champion in front of fans as the heel character. He needs to look strong here. It's not Edge's time anymore. I don't think him coming back needs him to win a championship. But 
it would be nice fans really liked edge here but roman reigns is the man to get it done this is the guy this is the son that everyone revolves around roman reigns wins in the main event of wrestlemania pyro goes off they are celebrating that was absolutely incredible one of the best main events we've had in wrestlemania history i love that go check that match out go check out this match this match and this match and maybe see some highlights of that that is wrestlemania baby that was great night one was decent i think the whole night one night two thing i don't think it really works because you're really spreading out all the stuff and it doesn't feel as big or as epic as it would if it were just one show it's more digestible but seriously just cut the matches that don't really need to be on wrestlemania then you can just have a four three hour show and it'll be all good so i kind of hope that goes back to one night of wrestlemania comment down below if you like night one and night two i'd personally like one night of wrestlemania but this night two was pretty damn great. I really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to see what we get now after WrestleMania. So stay tuned for more epic WWE action figure matches and videos. I got the Hardcore Championship coming up defended on the channel very soon. So stay tuned for that. But thank you guys for watching this review of night two of WrestleMania. Go check out the night one review if you did not see it. Please smash the like button if you like this review. Comment down below what you thought of the show. Do you want it to be? one night or two nights going forward into the future did you enjoy this show what do you think about roman reigns retaining the title of wrestlemania i know a lot of you will be upset or happy about that subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i will see you all in the next video wrestlemania head of the table baby big dog Ooh -ah. yes sir